Thank you. Um, there will be a lot of code on these slides. Don't despair. It's not meant for you to read and understand all of that. It's just to illustrate some, some concepts and principles. So basically what I want to talk about is how you can use a different language, namely Kotlin, to build GraphQL servers. And um, my clicker doesn't work. Great. My computer doesn't work, <laughs> which is not so great. OK, let's see. OK. Um, so I'm looking at Neo4j, developer relations, engineering, which is the fun place you can be to build all the stuff that you want. So for instance, integrating GraphQL with Neo4j. This is what we did. And we built something that we call the grand stack, which is GraphQL, React, Apollo, and Neo4j database, uh, which integrates basically uh, any GraphQL front and with Neo4j as a graph database. And what we do actually there is something that we've heard today quite often, which is transpiling GraphQL queries to Neo4j cipher queries, run them against the database, not n plus one, but exactly one query only, and return the results to the client. And at the same time, we take the uh, GraphQL schema and generate things like mutations, uh, queries, uh, and so on, so you don't have to write all the boilerplate code. And while doing that as a Neo4j extension, actually, I used Kotlin. So I've been using Kotlin for a while, since 2012, uh, honestly. But uh, doing this in, in Kotlin was very a pleasant experience, because the language allows you to easily handle transformations and things like that in a really elegant way. And I just wanted to share some of the of, uh, with you. So basically, 33 lines is my goal. And uh, welcome Kotlin. And Kotlin has like a plethora of cool features, from extension methods where you can add new functionality to existing da uh, classes, data classes. Uh, of course, you have uh, string inlines, uh, triple quote strings. Uh, you have uh, type inference uh, and, and things like that. So there's a lot of really cool stuff in Kotlin, which you don't usually get on Java or on Android, because Kotlin has been used not just by a few people, but a lot of people. And Google made it the official Android development language as well, or one official Android development language. So it's quite popular, as you can also see at this perfect hockey stick growth, right? So it's kind of GitHub, Stack Overflow, and plugin usages. So people are actually using it, which is really cool. And um, there are lots of places where you can find help. So I really like the broad breadth of the Kotlin community and how helpful they are giving your um, support and answering your questions and, and so on. So, but uh, of course, the, uh, the, the basis of all that is still Java and JVM, and I just want to highlight GraphQL Java. Who of you uses GraphQL Java in some way or another? A bunch of folks. It's really an amazing library by Annie Marek, uh, which is very easy to use, uh, which supports async operations. It's spec com compatible. It's already version 9, so the version increasing really dramatically, so it's, that's, that's really impressive. And um, it allows you things uh, to do that are uh, very concise and consistent, which you'll see in a second. Uh, my minimal example today will be just a simple uh, query, which you basically execute like that, right? So query which returns a string, takes a parameter, and just pass in a result, and then you get a response. So in GraphQL Java, it basically looks like this. You take your schema, you pass the schema, you get a, a type definition registry, you connect your resolvers to that, and then you execute it. So that's kind of all you need to write GraphQL in Java, which is quite concise given Java, right? We all <laughs> know that it's actually like, you know, Java converts XML into stack traces, as we all know, right? So, but that's quite, quite good. So uh, if you turn the whole thing into Kotlin, it shrinks quite a lot because you lose all the explicit type definitions. A lot of stuff gets removed. Semicolons as well go away, which is kind of cool. And you get triple strings and all this nice stuff, so which is nice. But for a proper GraphQL survey, we don't want to have like static schema and static resolvers and static queries, but we want to generalize that. So basically what we do, we just turn this into a GraphQL handler, which gets a schema passed in and resolvers passed in, which it kind of wires up together which is happening here. So it's just a simple uh, connecting the resolvers to the runtime wiring after we pass the schema. And then we have an uh, execute function, which takes a query from the outside and, and executes it. What's interesting here that this is an asynchronous function. So this is spent in a way means that it's using coroutines, which is a continu continuation style passing uh, concurrency approach, which doesn't use threads, but it's very efficient with lightweight um, scheduling of, of uh, many concurrent operations. And uh, then when we use that, it's just taking uh, the inputs from the, from the main argument 
and, and executing that. So that means when we run our main with this uh, command line parameter, we get back hello GraphQL. Um, so that's all that we need to have a GraphQL handler. And the only thing that's missing for a GraphQL server is a server. So we just take one uh, Kotlin server, which is uh, called Ketor, which is a very nice and very powerful server with a lot of features, including HTTP2 support, uh, WebSocket support, uh, Jot support, and um, HTML, DSLs, and so on. So it looks a lot like many other servers, like Express servers and others, and basically returns uh, and renders these things really nicely. <laughs> Can do stuff like automatically uh, transforming JSON into your own custom object types, and so on, so you don't have to do all this hard work, which is kind of nice. And now we can take our GraphQL handler, basically, and uh, put it together. So we take our um, setup for our GraphQL schema and our resolvers. We pass them to our GraphQL handler that we created before. Then we open this one GraphQL uh, endpoint uh, that we can pass um, the query parameters to and start a server. And that's all we need to have a GraphQL server in Kotlin. And basically, we can call it from curl, of course. You saw that uh, we have a static uh, data fetcher for 42 here, because the answer to all things is 42, as you all know. So that works uh, from, from curl. And of course, if you run it from, from graphical, then uh, it works as well. So hello, Berlin. Uh, what, what else is there, right? It would be kind of boring if we stopped there. Um, Kotlin can also transpile to JavaScript. So not just JVM, but also JavaScript. And as I learned, uh, around 40% of Kotlin projects are already used in JavaScript environments, which I found quite, quite surprising. So it cross-compiles, and you can include use TypeScript headers to kind of be com compatible with existing libraries. But there's also something ca called dynamic, which allows you to, to work with any JavaScript object or library. And so you can uh, even have a um, multi-module project where you reuse common code in Kotlin across JVM and JavaScript, because Kotlin is then, depending on the platform, transpiled to one or the other. And then you have the custom modules that have for the different language stuff. And basically, uh, this is just straight one, more or less straightly copied from GraphQL org, as you might uh, uh, see. And uh, basically, if we take this and turn it into Kotlin JavaScript, uh, that's that. So it's Valid Kotlin code looks, it would execute the same on basically on the JVM as well. And we require these libraries, we build a schema with the triple strings, and then we just basically run this and with an express server. And so it runs as well from, from JavaScript as well. Cool. What else can we do? Kotlin native. It does not just compile to Java or JVM and JavaScript, it also called, compiles using LLVM to any binary. So it compiles to iOS to OS X, Windows, uh, Linux native, to Android native, and um, iOS and WebAssembly as well. So you can write things once in Kotlin, use all the C libraries that you want to use for performance, and integrate that. And it's really good for also interop with Swift and other things. And you can also generate libs again from Kotlin native that then are consumed by other native apps uh, as well. And so uh, the, the next goal is basically, I didn't get to that, but the next goal is to use micro HTTP daemon and uh, libgraphql parser to build a C-level kind of native GraphQL uh, server as a an, as an demo for that capability. <laughs> and then we can connect to any database or lib use curl for consuming rest endpoints or something like that. OK. There are lots of other things, so this only scratched the surface. So there is actually a pure Kotlin GraphQL implementation as well called KGraphQL. Uh, there is a KGraph, uh, which is a client side DSL for building GraphQL, type safe GraphQL queries with a DSL builder, which is quite, quite nice. And a bunch of other projects which uh, are using GraphQL uh, with Kotlin with different uh, approaches, libraries, and, and, and so on. OK. and. Um, that's basically it from me. And I just wanted to remind you of our hackathon, uh, the Grand Stack hackathon that we're running. And if you have any questions around this or want to see this in action or see it running so that you don't think I just put it on the slides, but it doesn't actually run, uh, find, <laughs> find me at, uh, at any booth. And that's it. I hope I inspired you to check out Kotlin and build something small and see if it works for you. And then uh, enjoy and have a good life. Thank you. <laughs>